Hey, I'm Joseph. Welcome to the 3D Sorcerer YouTube channel. In this introductory video, I'm going to give you some background about myself and 3D Sorcerer. Talk a little bit about some products that I've made previously and also what I have planned for this channel going forward. Thanks for watching and I hope that you enjoy it. So to start off, I wanted to give a little background about myself. I'm currently a fourth year medical student at UAB School of Medicine. I'm flying into diagnostic radiology. I'll be going through the match process here in a couple of months. Before that, I did undergrad at UAB where I studied biomedical engineering. Uh, that's where I was first exposed to CAD and did some 3D printing as well uh, during undergrad. I actually liked it enough that I bought my own 3D printer. I bought a Prusa Mark III, which is a printer that I highly recommend even today. Now, Prusa is a company that actually 3D prints their own 3D printers, so you can learn a lot from how they design some of their parts since they are 3D printed instead of injection molded. So that's another benefit of buying one of their printers. And you can also print your own replacement parts, which is kind of a neat feature. So around the same time, I became interested in Amazon FBA, Fulfillment by Amazon, which is a service that Amazon offers to small businesses where Amazon handles all the logistics and fulfillment of your orders. If you just ship in uh, your products to their warehouses and they also offer you know, free two-day delivery with Amazon Prime for a small fee on each product. So I thought that, that was interesting because it was a way to make some passive income if you're able to create a product and you know everyone that's in college is looking for ways to make some money on the side, so that's something that I looked into, and ultimately that's how uh, 3D Sorcerer was founded. So after I bought my Prusa, I joined their Facebook group and saw that a lot of people were trying to complete this Prusa DIY uh, 3D printer enclosure build. And what that was, was Prusa basically made a guide on how to build a cheap enclosure using an Ikea lac side table some plexiglass and a few screws and magnets and they provided some 3D printable parts that people could print off on their own printer and then uh, basically assemble this enclosure. And the reason that people wanted an enclosure was it increases the ambient uh, temperature around the printer so that you can print more complex materials. And then you also get the added benefit of reduced sound and reduced smell since a lot of people have this at their home. And the issue that people were having with this uh, enclosure build was that they couldn't find the plexiglass uh, available to complete the build. And if you think about it, people would try to get the plexiglass cut to specific dimensions, but if you go into your local glass shop, they might charge you a decent amount for that. So what I ultimately discovered was that I could uh, buy the plexiglass in bulk, have it pre-cut to the correct dimensions, and then sell that on Amazon FBA. So that's where 3D Sorcerer was originally formed. Uh, and the idea behind this is that we source the non-3D printable parts and then provide kits for people to basically uh, combine their 3D printer parts with the non-3D printer parts and make uh, full assemblies. So that's the backstory behind where 3D Sorcerer was founded. As you'll notice, uh, the spelling of Sorcerer is wrong, obviously, and that's where it comes from. It's because we source the parts for 3D printing. So now let's jump into Fusion 360. I'll show you some of my designs I've done previously. I have a pretty wide variety of different things I've made and uh, some of them are better than others. Some are simple, some are more complicated, but this will give you a broad overview of some of the things I've done previously. All right, so now that we're in Fusion 360, uh, this is the CAD program that I use. It's an Autodesk product and it's available for free for people that don't use it for commercial purposes. So if you're looking to get into it, I uh, highly recommend. It's really uh, useful and pretty user-friendly overall. So this product in particular was part of my BME Senior Design uh, product. And what it was, was it was a Braille highlighter. So if you imagine this uh, device slides over Braille and essentially adds ink to the top of the Braille uh, divots. And the reason you want to do this, or the reason that the client wanted this, is because when you're teaching someone Braille, uh, most people read by sight that are teaching the individual this, this unfortunately losing their vision. So uh, sometimes it's hard to read, uh, especially visually, obviously, trying to read white dots on a white page. So the idea was to try to increase the contrast of those dots. And we also made this little casing that has the uh, ink roller there and then also uh, can store the Braille highlighter in the casing itself. This is another product that I did around the same time. It's called the Mavic Mount. Uh, it mounts the Mavic uh, DJI Mavic Pro 2, which is a pretty popular consumer drone. Uh, at the time at least and 
what it does is you're able to mount a GoPro or a Loom Cube, which is a pretty bright flashlight to the top of the drone. And the reason that this is different than some of the other options available is that usually you have to remove uh, the whole assembly to change the battery. But the way I designed this one was the battery is in this area, so you could remove the battery and keep uh, everything situated up here. And this kind of clips into place, and overall it worked pretty well. Uh, I think that uh, it was a relatively good design, but it was also challenging because it had these curves uh, in multiple directions. And if you're familiar at all with CAD and uh, Fusion 360, it's a little difficult to do uh, radiuses in multiple directions like that. This is another product that I did. Uh, it's called the Clothes Mule. So the idea behind this was uh, if you ever had to carry a lot of uh, clothing and hanging clothes to your vehicle and you live on like the fifth floor or some, some apartment building or condo or whatever, uh, if you're carrying a lot of hanging clothes, that can start to hurt your hands and fingers uh, pretty quickly. So the idea was to hang the clothes on this strap and uh, this would go on your shoulder, you would hold the strap on this end and then have uh, the clothes hanging here and this hook was there so that you could hang it up uh, in your closet when you're picking out the clothes to take and then also hang it in your vehicle when you're starting to put it uh, into the proper position inside your, inside your vehicle. So this product unfortunately didn't sell that well but I still think it's overall a pretty good idea. Uh, hopefully it has some old product photos of it to hopefully demonstrate it a little better than the model. This is another product that I did pretty recently. Uh, this is a uh, ultrasound probe, obviously, but what we did was we added this uh, adapter to it so that it could be used with a virtual reality headset. Uh, we basically reverse engineered the probe to make it very similar to uh, what you would actually use in real life. And the idea was to help train radiology residents and other individuals on how to use an ultrasound probe uh, in virtual reality. So. Uh, we try to make it as, as similar to the real life probe as possible and uh, if you're familiar with uh, virtual reality controllers a lot of times they have the little rings around them and essentially how this worked was this would clip into the ring and so the controller would be down here and you would hold it uh, on this end um, and that way you could better simulate the uh, experience of doing an ultrasound. And this is another product that I did, it's called the Gate Grabber. Uh, the idea behind this was if you're ever been on a farm or a ranch or anything like that uh, they have a lot of metal gates and you swing the gate open and sometimes the gate likes to swing back shut when you don't really want it to do that so I tried to create a device to keep the gate open and that's what I came up with was this gate grabber and it operates by gravity so the gate hits this area uh, bounces up and then the gate goes past it and then it shuts on the gate so the gate gets trapped behind here and I'll add a demonstration video of that uh, at the end of this, but <clears throat> essentially came up with this version. Uh, it's going to be injection molded, so you have to do some ribbing back here to make an injection molded part, and then obviously down here too. But uh, ended up being too expensive to make it this way, so then I made another version which was a different way of making it. Uh, this is cast iron, I believe. And the idea here was to basically make it more, like a lot stronger and also hopefully reduce the price some. But unfortunately this was also very expensive. So then I moved on to this version which um, may have been slightly less aesthetically pleasing than the previous version but it was a lot cheaper to make. Able to basically cut some metal out and then bend it here and then do some welding on this side. And uh, this here is a standard square tubing that is relatively cheap. So. That's ultimately what I ended up making, and this is for sale currently on Amazon. So if you're interested, go check it out, but I uh, thought that it was a pretty good demonstration of having to do things differently. You know, you try one thing and then try something else and ultimately arrive at uh, something pretty different than what you started with, but was able to figure out something that worked. Also made this box for the gate grabber. Cotton Dog is a YouTuber. He's a guy from Mississippi that has a lot of uh, people that might be interested and the gate, gra gate grabber that watched his channel, so I thought I'd send him one and made this custom box to try to make it kind of nice presentation. And unfortunately, he hasn't uh, posted it yet, but maybe uh, somehow he'll see this video and, and decide to post it. And uh, also, I don't really make 
all complicated designs. This is another product that I made, and this was actually for my wife. She had some wrapping paper and didn't really have a good place to store it and wanted to kind of uh, have a place above the washer and dryer to put it uh, where there really wasn't anything there and thought it'd be a good place to store it. So I came up with this design, and this allows you to remove you know, individual uh, rolls of wrapping paper and able to store some up here as well. So uh, I think it turned out pretty well, and she uses it a lot around this time of year. This is another design made, really kind of a functional part. We have a utility closet and we wanted to hang up some of our luggage so we don't really use that often. So I designed this and I'll add a quick little video of that here. But um, yeah, it's pretty useful and relatively strong and able to do the job that we needed to do. Just add screws here and good to go. And this is the final thing I want to show. Um, this is actually for a star that we have on the Christmas tree. Uh, the Christmas tree was this diameter and the star was this diameter, so obviously if you try to put the star on the top of the Christmas tree, uh, it, would, it would not fit properly. So I made this, a uh, really simple design, but uh, worked pretty well and turned out uh, good as far as I can tell. So this is just a couple of designs I've done previously, I thought it would be useful to show and uh, excited about some things I'll be doing in the future as well. You might be wondering why would I start this YouTube channel now? Uh, I have residency coming up, which is very time consuming, and then also have a small business to run. But I came up with five different reasons why I decided to make the channel. So number one is just to document my progress. I've improved a lot since I started, obviously, about seven years ago. But uh, in 10, 20, 30 years, I can't really imagine how much better I'll be at solid modeling and CAD if I continue to work on it and get better at it. So I think that that'll be really rewarding for me to be able to look back on this video and the first couple of videos on this channel and see how much has changed over time. So reason number two is to be a back scratcher. <laughs> so what I mean by that is you can probably tell from a lot of my designs that I went through earlier is that a lot of things that I did was just something that bothered me. Uh, something that I felt like I could improve upon and I think that that's a skill that I've really enjoyed and to be able to kind of think of something that could be better and design it and improve it and then print it off and actually use it is something that has been really rewarding for me personally and I think that it could be a rewarding experience for you as well. So I think that uh, just showing people that it's really access more accessible than ever to kind of scratch your own itch is something that I wanted to share on YouTube. So number three is to get better at making videos. I think the general trend of people consuming video content online is going to continue on an upward trajectory for the foreseeable future. And I'd like to improve my ability to make videos that are engaging both from an editing standpoint as well as from a communication standpoint. So one way to do that is just to make a lot of videos. I think having this YouTube channel will encourage me to uh, develop that skill set. So reason number four is to learn about manufacturing. I really enjoy making things. You can probably tell by now. I think it's really cool to be able to take something from an idea to a physical product. And that's part of why I really like CAD, really like 3D printing, and I like just manufacturing in general. And to be honest, I really don't know a lot about manufacturing, but I think that obviously there's people out there that do, and this is a way to kind of connect with those people. And I think with all the advances in robotics and automation, going on, there will be opportunities in that space going forward and I would like to be involved in that in some capacity. So uh, hopefully I'll have some exposure to those people through this channel and be able to learn a lot more and share those things with you. So number five is to make cool stuff. So having a YouTube channel and trying to make products is a way to kind of encourage me to step out of my comfort zone and to try to make things that I wouldn't otherwise try to make. And there's a lot of things that I don't know that I need to learn in order to make those products. So it will also be a learning experience for me as I try to learn things like circuits. For example, I've, I had a circuits course in undergrad and uh, knew it well enough to make an A in the class, but I uh, haven't applied that in a long time. So I think revisiting that would be a good thing for me and would also be a way for me to share kind of how those things work and also uh, hopefully make something cool with, with electronics, obviously. So. That's another reason why I wanted to make this channel, is just to push myself to learn how things work, how to design things, and how to make uh, cool stuff. So as far as the video content, the primary thing that I like to cover initially is reverse engineering, some pretty simple products. I think it'd be interesting to see 
how much cheaper we can make them uh, 3D printed versus uh, how much you have to buy them for like at the store on Amazon. So that's one thing I'd like to do. And then I also uh, like to make some kind of intro CAD courses where if you haven't had any experience in CAD in, in uh, high school or college that you could kind of uh, learn a little bit of the basics and maybe make something your own and I think I can teach that relatively well. Uh, it can be frustrating at times but it's a really rewarding experience if you know what you're doing. And then after that I'd like to just take some feedback and kind of go in whatever direction the audience sees fit. So that's the plan as far as the content for the channel going forward. So I have two goals for this channel for 2023. One is to make 50 videos this year. Uh, I think that's gonna be a little bit of a challenge since I have residency coming up, but hopefully I can make a decent number before I start that. And then the second goal is to reach 50,000 subscribers. I think that's a pretty aspirational goal. Obviously it's a big number, but hopefully I can get there. Probably need a couple of videos to go viral, but um, we'll see what we can do. And obviously I'd love if you consider subscribing. I literally have zero subscribers right now and one video posted, which is this one. So uh, anything you can do to help would be greatly appreciated. Thanks for taking time to watch and see you in the next one.